Um, I'm delighted to welcome our next guest on stage for a pop-up performance. Elaine Millibon is an author and a wildlife photographer. You may have seen her work on Book Design In Fact. She began her career as a senior science writer and her work has appeared on the Discovery Channel Canada, Science, NPR, BBC Earth News, The American Naturalist, and The Washington Post, as well, as I say, on Book Design. Whenever we publish any photographs or photo essays by Elaine, about design, our, our readers are literally awestruck, as are we as um, the editors. Um, whether it's prairie dogs, snow leopards, river otters, earthworms, frogs, you name it, whatever she does, she combines this incredible eye with the sensitivity of someone who's obviously deeply knowledgeable about her subject. So I'm delighted to welcome and please join me in welcoming Elaine Lebon. Thank you, Tracy, for that lovely introduction. In fact, Berkeley Side has put on this wonderful event. Thank you for coming. I hope you enjoy it as much as we all do. And Berkeley Side does publish my favorite articles. And my favorite of my Berkeley Side articles is this one here, Sweetness and Light, Diary of a Hummingbird's Nest. Um, I'll just give you a little insight into what it took to take the photos for this story. And it's very meaningful to me. So um, it basically, basically began on March 1st of this year. And it was kind of an auspicious day for me because I had been uh, in bed with a really bad nerve injury for weeks. I hadn't gone out driving on my own, and this was my first day out on my own. I was in my favorite cafe in Oakland, and uh, a bird flew in. And it got kind of uh, disoriented in the cafe, and I actually went behind a table, picked it up, and threw it, tossed it back to the air. That, that felt really good. And when I sat down, just a few minutes later, my friend came up to me. He said, there's something I'd really like to show you, so come with me across the street. This is my friend's father's building. It's in sort of a commercial district. And if you look behind the stairs and under the deck, there is a little courtyard. And in that really little courtyard is a really little camellia sapling. It's not even a full-grown bush or tree, but it's, it's a sapling about this, about this tall. And when my friend showed me, sorry, when my friend showed me uh, the, the little gem inside that camellia sapling. I actually, in pain, drove home to Orinda, got my camera, which, by the way, I should always keep with me, <laughs> came back, and I got this picture. This is the nest of an Anna's hummingbird. Um, it's really hard to imagine the size, but it's about the size of a ping pong ball, literally this big, and it's a home to two beautiful eggs. According to the Birds of North America Online, it's an online resource through the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, and as hummingbirds invariably lay two eggs per nest. They can lay them a day or so apart, but these beauties were there. You can see that there are feathers inside the nest to help keep them warm. And at this moment, I guess nobody really knows how this female hummingbird managed to, manages to make a nest, lay her eggs, incubate the eggs, all by herself. But she did take short breaks and went out to feed, and that's, I presume, what she was doing when I took this picture. And I thought, this is wonderful. Now I have a project. I'm back in action, and I want to trace and follow the story of this little sweet little family of hummingbirds. Here's the mother. As you can see in the photo on the left, she had just collected moss from this low-lying wall and she was weaving it into her nest. Her nest, in fact, is made of mosses, lichens, dog's hairs, and it even has stretchy insect silks and spider webs. Uh, I'll show you the reason for that later. But mostly what she did for the two weeks that I observed her incubating her eggs was sit on her eggs. Um, this March was pretty cold, and I got this photo of her on maybe my second or third outing to see, to visit the nest. And once I got this shot, I was pretty happy with it. And I didn't want to keep returning and possibly disturb her, make her fly away, and maybe the eggs would get cold. I wasn't sure. So I, I just kept a really respectful distance with my long lens. And after I got this shot, I just uh, crossed my fingers, hoped, and waited for good news. And sure enough, About two weeks later, on March 13th, I got, well, on March 12th, I got a phone call at about 4.30 in the afternoon that little chicks had been seen in the nest. 
I showed up before dawn the next <coughs> morning, and I stood on the chair I always stood in. Whenever I looked at the nest, especially when the chicks were below the rim like they are here, I didn't touch any branches or any leaves or anything. That's why there's some kind of out-of-focus bokeh around the photos, but um, I glanced in on them. It is so hard to believe how small they were. I mean, if the eggs were the size of Tic Tac mitts, these were even smaller. And uh, they were alive once in a while. Perhaps they'd feel a breeze or something, and they'd sort of wiggle. I felt like I could see them, their hearts beating. They were so small. And that's an egg fragment there. And mom, mom, the mother bird came back, and she brooded the eggs, meaning brooded the chicks, meaning that she sat on them to keep them warm. But this is just a few days later, day six, and you can already see that they're starting to grow. This is day eight, just two days later, and you can see their little beaks waiting there in position for their mother. At this age, mostly what they did is sleep. So when the mother came with food to feed them, she actually had to bonk them on the heads with her beak to wake them up, <laughs> one at a time. So she fed this one, the other one sort of asleep, and then a second after she was done, it would be asleep, and then she'd tap the other one and wake it up. Then after every feeding, she would just drift off and float up over those rooftops I showed you. Uh, she was always out of sight when she left, but she was never out of earshot. I could hear her ticking somewhere out of sight over the rooftop. Meanwhile, the chicks continue to grow. This is about day 18, and this is just one day later, day 19. They're becoming more alert, and I felt like I could see a difference from each day to the next. This is day 21, and to me, <laughs> They're starting to look like little hummingbirds. And as you can see, sort of in the corner down here, the uh, insect silks and the um, spider webs allowed the nest to expand as they grew. So here the nest is starting to expand. Now at this point, at about 21, 22 days of age, um, they needed no more bonks on the head. They were totally alert, and in fact, they somehow sensed their mother's presence before I was there. Um, so if I wanted to get a photo, I would stand far back with my monopod and uh, watch them. And when they woke up on their own and started begging, I knew it would be seconds later that the mother would show up. Sometimes less than seconds later. They didn't give me much warning. Now this is a particularly meaningful picture to me. Here the chicks are about 22 days old. And at the time that I did this project, I talked about it to all my friends and family, and my father, father was terminally ill. And one of the last outings we took together was to come to see the hummingbirds. Um, he could still walk a little bit at that point, and it was kind of a cold, overcast day. But he'd never seen chicks in the nest, so to see hummingbirds was extra special. And what made this even more special was the fact that one of these chicks is sitting on the rim of the nest. Now, according to the BNA, the Birds of North America Online, with the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, this is one of the last things they do before they fledge, before they take a journey on their own. And to me, it just was really poignant that my dad got to see that. Um, a few weeks later, when he was in hospice, I showed him the collection of photos, and this is the one that he really smiled at. And, uh, it was meaningful to me because just before this talk, I was across the street at the Berkeley Rep and there was a hummingbird, and Anna's hummingbird just like this in the trees. So, um, and sure enough, hummingbird, even a happy hummingbird is going to grow up. So by morning, it had fledged. Wow. There's just one left now, and this one looked very comfortable all by itself. In the <laughs> <laughs> very, very happy there. The mother came and fed it periodically. And through the day, I would check on it to see if it was perching on the rim. It looked so at home that I felt pretty confident that if I went home at the end of the day, it would be there in the morning when I got there. So I went home, and I literally all night, I dreamt about hummingbirds. <laughs> and then before dawn the next morning, I could hardly sleep. There it was. The lighting wasn't too great because, like I said, it was before dawn. It's in the shadows of the camellia leaves. 
but uh, I want to stay with it to see it through its journey. And uh, here's what it did. <coughs> Flapping the wings. And then lift off. <laughs> uh, so I waited for about half an hour and started taking these little, I call them practice flights where it would just uh, flutter, flutter, flutter. The feet would hold on, hold on, then lift off for a few seconds. It would hover around the nest, and then it would land back down. <laughs> Once it chirped to its mom, and I, I could, it, it started chirping, and then its mom came in and fed it one last time uh, before. It flew out into the world. This is the first time this little hummingbird had been out of the shade of those camellia bushes, and um, for just a microsecond, it paused in the middle of that tiny courtyard as if to say goodbye, I don't know. Then it uh, went up onto the balcony and then disappeared over the rooftops, just like its mom. And even though I wanted to spend more time with this little bird, I knew what I'd seen was very moving. And you know how I know it was a really good thing? Was that after the bird disappeared over the rooftops, I could hear the sound of two hummingbirds ticking. <laughs> Good luck, hummingbirds. I hope you have a beautiful life. This is an adult Anna's hummingbird in a neighbor's garden. And that was the story I did for Berkeley.